today we're going to talk a little bit about insulation. This van has been insulated with Owens Corning, uh, the pink, pink, uh, pink Panther stuff. Been insulated with that for about 15 years. People will tell you, oh, that's not any good. It breaks down, it gets dust, whatever. No, no it's fine. It's great. Come inside, take a quick look. Insulation in the walls aren't going to come escaping out and get at me. A crack in the ceiling is sealed. That's not going to leak any dust on me. It's theoretically possible some dust could get out of there, but then wouldn't this be dusty? And it's not. More important than your insulation, though, is your coverings up front. As you can see here, we don't have anything on the windshield. Uh, that is a tinted with ceramic tint windshield. That'll make a huge difference. There's very little color in that tint, but quite a bit of heat reflected out. Also tint on the side windows and curtains to separate. Another thing that's gonna make a big difference is windows. This door obviously doesn't have a window. I traded that door out specifically to get rid of that heat load. These side windows give you a good bit of heat load. Something like this, it's a fiberglass reinforced panel with a little bit of beading around it. You'll find an affiliate link in the comments below to this banding that you put around the outside of the FRP fiberglass reinforced panel that you can get at any home builder supply store. Might take a cardboard cutout a couple of times to get a perfect fit there, but as you can see, it, it squeaks in good and tight. Now I can close that door and it'll stay there. Uh, this panel is probably eight years old, so it lasts a lot longer than any of that bubble wrap stuff is going to. Reflectix, that stuff wears out because it's not firm. Uh, I did leave mine sitting too close to the space heater once, so it's time that I get some new ones. But for now, that works real well. As you can see, it didn't fall out. One thing about this fan, the spray foam insulation, sounds a lot different. And I'll show you this on another van in a little bit. Everything is nice and solid. When it opens, it sounds like I need a little oil. But right now in this spray foam van, We're at about 85 degrees. Of course, it doesn't hurt any that this van is covered with solar panels. Like it didn't make any difference when we put those on. This van is Owens Corning, like the other one. It's probably been installed for five or six years. You hear that difference? Very hollow sounding. Very rattly in the door. Even when the door is just rolling, it sounds like an empty box. Everything rattles and clanks. So I like the spray foam filled doors instead of Owens Corning filled doors. It makes a big difference. Temperature in this van right now, 87, 88 degrees, 87. So it's at least two degrees warmer in this van compared to the spray foam van. Um, some of the causes for that, we don't have any reflectics on this window, there's nothing there. A uh, person could argue that the solar panels on top of that other van are keeping it in the shade, but you've already achieved the goal with the spray foam, the solar panels don't really make any difference. And this van also has the tinted windshield where the spray foam van does not. The spray foam van has reflectics on the windshield today, this van does not. So there's a lot of different things going on here. This wall does not get an interior vapor barrier. Because as you can see, there's no venting along the eaves. There's no weep holes exposed along the bottom. Now there are actually some weep holes down underneath here in the seams, in the welded seams. I've seen fair argument that inside the factory door there was a vapor barrier. There was this plastic sheet and some gooey stuff holding it fast. I won't argue what that was there for because frankly, I don't know. Was it effective as a vapor barrier? Certainly not. It did allow moisture to get inside the door and that's exactly why it's no longer on my door. Spray foam should be installed to fully fill the void back here behind the paneling.
contracting out to have the spray foam done for you, make sure they know what they're doing and, and know a little bit about vans, how they differ from spraying houses, uh, and then shave it flat. A uh, nice long serrated bread knife works wonders for that. You definitely have to get at it from the right angle in order to see it. That's what happens when they spray the foam too fast and try to fill the voids in a single pass. The foam expands inside and deforms the metal a little bit. You can't do it in a single pass. You will get waving on the outside of the van. The, the, the paint, painted surface will get some ripples in it that's very noticeable in proper light or in, in, the, in the right light. Vapor barrier, back to vapor barrier. The outside metal skin of your van is your vapor barrier. If you put a second vapor barrier plastic sheet inside, you end up with this pocket that the air can't circulate. You can't ever get it truly dry in there because uh, since we're not installing in a laboratory environment, it's always gonna have some moisture back there. You don't want that moisture collecting against the wall, causing a drip, soaking into your insulation. Uh, spray foam insulation doesn't give anything the opportunity to soak in. Much better alternative in my opinion. Spray foam also gives some additional structure, uh, makes the doors sound better when they close, makes the roof strong enough to walk on without the popping and pinging you usually get when walking on a metal van roof. And uh, my side-by-side -side tests of different vans have proven that the spray foam is a little bit better than regular bad insulation. So my suggestion, no vapor barrier. You've got your outside metal skin, put on your insulation, if your insulation has a paper backing, of course, put that toward the paneling as you normally would in a brick and mortar type of installation and put your paneling on. In this case, I've cloth covered it. Spray foam insulation is better than bad insulation in my opinion. Uh, it does a better job of filling every crack and crevice. You can get it inside the little areas uh, much more easily. If you if you're gentle and, and don't put too much foam in there at, at one time, you won't have any metal expanding on the outside of the van, giving a wavy look to your metal panels. Spray foam gives additional structure to the walls, uh, absorbs a lot of the road vibration sound. And from my testing, the spray foam works just a little bit better all in all, and it just a, a couple degrees better. Not enough to say absolutely for sure, oh, five, 10 degrees. No, it was, it was two or three degrees and it depended on the time of day and the weather. Thermal bridging, everywhere there is a rib that this is connected to. Your insulation can't come straight across that rib. So you've got metal connected to metal, colder metal on the outside, conducts heat loss from the inside. Your warmer metal on this inside panel is gonna represent heat loss on the outside metal. Uh, you can see it in some of the pictures of the van's northern climate with a little bit of frost on the outside of the van. You can see where that thermal bridging is happening and losing heat from inside the van. You can look at it the other way as cold coming into the van that way, that same spot. Uh, it's very hard to insulate around that or over that without giving up some thickness of your walls. So it's a, it's a small cost. Choosing an insulation material. Batting insulation, fiberglass versus rock wall versus sheep's wool. It's not that big of a difference. One's not gonna work any better than the other. If they fill the same space, they're doing the same job. There's nothing magical about your insulation material that holds heat better or less than any other material. All it's doing is holding the air stagnant so that your thermal energy doesn't move from one surface to the other. If you can imagine air moving around inside of a balloon, if you get one side of the balloon warm, that air is going to convect around inside the balloon, it's going to stir, it's going to get the other side of the balloon warm. If you fill that balloon with any kind of insulation at all, you get one side warm, that air doesn't stir around, it doesn't convect, you don't have the, the heat loss to the outside. So sheep's wool is great if you've got sheep. If I could afford it, I'd get alpacas and load it up with alpaca fur because that just sounds cool to me. It'd probably smell like ass, but hey, I'd be traveling with an alpaca. <laughs>